Hello and welcome back to Line Mill Studios. I am Ryan. I'm going to be talking about an artist's artwork here. And the artist's name is Nightwolf. And it's, uh, we've got a lot of very good drawings. Now, this is actually part two of me trying to record this. I went through an, a 10 minute review of Nightwolf's artwork and managed to not record any audio. So, this is, this is take two. Uh, but it won't be hard to talk about again because maybe there's going to be even more things that I spot that I want to talk about. But I want to first of all t start talking about Nightwolf uh, and his goals. He was talking to me about wanting to make a comic and he started working on one. And uh, not to bury the lead, but I, I would say absolutely do so. Go ahead and make a comic, and if you're interested, you can you can uh, send me any information you want about it, we'll, uh, and we'll go back and forth on it and talk about it and stuff. Because I, I think you got a real talent here, and I think you got some good ideas, and I'll point some of those good ideas out, and I want to uh, tell you about a couple of things you want, want to think about doing. So first and foremost, uh, let's get this... Um, Let's get this going. So this is the first character that I saw of yours that you drew. Now, a couple of really cool things. Number one, you have a good sense of symmetry. You know, things being the same on each side. And you don't, you're also not afraid of breaking that symmetry with this. What looks like, uh, I think this is like a grenade belt. Or like maybe it's a, uh, it's a, it looks like a tactical belt. It's slung across his hip. And that's cool. You, you're doing all five fingers. And that's awesome. You've got the uh, you've got good proportions. Of course, there's there's always uh, room for a different kind of uh, uh, there's always room for trying different kind of body types out. So, and we can talk more about that uh, later. But this is very good proportions, and I also noticed that most of your drawings are hiding the feet. That's not a problem because I um, feet are very difficult to draw. And very often, uh, especially at this stage uh, of, of learning, you start to realize that sometimes where you place the head, because I'm, I'm assuming you started from, from up here and then went down, uh, sometimes you get to, <laughs> down to the bottom of the page and you realize that yeah, you just didn't even leave any room for the feet. So, you know, and it's okay for things to go off of the screen, off the page, and that's perfectly fine. But the same way that you're attacking these hands, uh, make sure that you attack the feet. And we, uh, I'll talk more about how to start sketching out a character to make sure that you have the whole figure in the paper a little bit later down the road. Maybe I should do a series. I'm not sure. Nevertheless, this is excellent drawing. The shading is fantastic. I love this. looks like light on this side of this character on his helmet and the darkness on here. And he's got like this medieval inspired looking armor it looks really gothic and cool uh i would have even liked to have seen this this counter shaded look on some of the other plates uh, and some of the other armor and it looks like you got uh, some interesting texture on the boots here the uh boots look really cool so this one of the things you might want to look at and i'm going to try to put this in i'll put this link in the description below so when you see this video go ahead and go to the description below and I'll send I'll get I'll have links for all the things I'm talking about right when I what I want to talk to you about is taking a look at a gentleman named Trent Kaniuga and Trent Kaniuga is a comic book artist and illustrator from way back he works a lot now in video games doing design work and I think he's working on his own video game Nevertheless, he has a lot of great videos about character studies. And so I'm going to e either look for that uh, one of those videos and, and link that, or at least I'll, I'll link his YouTube channel because that is a really good resource to look at for how to understand uh, how to, to design your characters because you're, you're on the right path. If we take a look at these... Oh, whoa. went a little fast here. If we take a look at some of these characters... That you've been drawing and this is very very competent i love this shadow you got the shadow going what you're doing is exactly what you should be doing which is building up a 
a repertoire of sketches and ideas about your story. And these all look like characters from your story. Uh, I talked a lot about this particular page because this, this page is very impressive. Your, you can tell a story and I can, I can tell that you, you think about things structurally like literally physically in the world structurally not just the structure of a story but like how things work so for instance one of the things that i found really impressive was this fence and sometimes it's it, uh, very often actually it's it's not the characters uh the, which are cool it, but it's usually not the characters that tell you the what the quality is it's it's all these little ancillary details that you wouldn't even think about the the cityscape behind here the shading that you you've got um your the moon the crescent moon up here you made the moon s such that it's a little bit lighter a little more faint than the city so pushing that moon back and we we understand it to be a, a distant celestial body you did a great job with this fence in front of this this woman here i i immediately saw it for what it was it's it's you got these these fence posts and you used your lines in order to uh, draw out the shape of the fence posts but then behind it you'll notice that the the fence posts patterns are continued but they're they're shaded light gray and so uh, obviously this this fence continues behind her but the cool thing about this is that with just a little touch you could have just done the front fence and i would have recognized it as a fence but with just one little extra touch you managed to not only tell me where she is in space but even create even more depth than just the cityscape behind her it's it, it and i get it and i get like a sense this is like clearly the the, the top of a building uh there's probably you know almost the the size of a small city block that's how big these buildings are in the city and and that's that's what that tells me it's a a little just tiny touch told me so much more about what's happening in this environment and that's that's excellent then we've got our hero he's shocked he sees her fall um she uh, i'm presuming she jumps uh because she's sad i can see that she's sad she's crying right here uh, but it looks like she's pretty well resigned to what she's doing. And then, swoosh, this, uh, the, the, our hero comes in and rescues her. And you can see the speed of her hair. That's excellent. You can see the, the, the whipping of the cape. And, um, is it, or is it a cloak? It's act, well, I, is it a, a cloak is just a cape with a hood, I guess. Well, nevertheless, it looks really cool. So, you can you can not only tell, show us the structures in the world but you can also tell a story you you can see a narrative progression now i do want to talk about um a couple of things if you're if you're interested in making a book and i'm going to just assume that you're interested in maybe publishing a book like having a, a real physical comic book in your hand you got to think about how you compose your page now i do uh, this what we call aspect ratio this this uh height and width so it's longer than it is tall um that this kind of ratio is the same kind of ratio that i use when i'm doing mine but but i you if you're going to do that what you want to do is well i'm going to tell you the rule and then i'm going to tell you the way you break the rule so what you want to do if you're going to do this is that you want to basically understand that the page, this whole page is going to be split in the middle. So when you open it up, you're going to see right in the middle, it's going to be creased. So, and you can, you can double check this with any comic book that you got in, in, uh, uh, at your place or, you know, you have at your disposal. But you need to design for that. Now, this is not so bad 
uh, but like something like a, a close-up portrait of this character, you wouldn't want to have that split right down the middle unless you had a very specific storytelling reason why. So what you'd want to do is design for the idea that there's going to be a panel split. And sometimes you, there's just nothing for it. We call it double page spread, for instance, when you, have, when you open up the, the page and you see this double page spread where it's just one big picture uh, in on, on both pages so you're supposed to read it as one whole image and you're going to have an ine inevitable crease and split in, in in the illustration but that's not a big deal as long as you don't have some uh, unless it's not a big deal if you don't if you compose it well enough so that you don't just have your main principal character split in two or if he's split in two there's some or whatever the focus is if it's split in two, it, there's some storytelling reason why. So that's something you want to uh, keep in mind. Now, for the, the break of that rule, here's the break of that rule. You can make your book like this. So let's say that you like this, like I said, aspect ratio. What you could do is make all your pages like this and understand that when you open the book, this is say I don't know if this is page one but let's just say this is page one you say this is page one and then you open up the next page and then you'd have basically this would be a very long this would be a very wide book to be opened up which is fine because um, uh, uh, children's books are often in this ratio so when you open up a children's book very often you'll have the like really large wide book now uh, there are there are some books out there, I'm certain, I can't think of uh, one right off the bat, but I've seen them before, where we have this really wide ratio, this really big book, and that's perfectly fine. You can, you can, the cool thing about comics is that there's the conventional rules that most people kind of go by, and then there are people who uh, get bold and try something a little bit different. So this is just one way to do it. There's and, and anything that I explain also, uh, understand that it's just from my experience and from from what I've seen work for other people. But that's not you know, anything I say isn't the only way to go. Now there were some more images I wanted to talk about. That's a great portrait. Ah yes. So and you were also mentioning to me that you've been practicing these anime manga eyes, and you've been doing a great job. One of the things that you might want to do is start thinking about these highlights. So what's happening here is this glimmer um, on the eyes. The eyes are a watery surface. And um, so inevitably, if, if, you can, if the eye is exposed to light, wherever the light, wherever the source of the light is, there's a possibility that it'll be shining uh, directly at the eye and because the eye is wet I'm, well you know I'm speaking I'm sure you know but for anybody who doesn't <clears throat> so what you're going to want to do is think about sometimes where the light is coming from let me see if I can find another image there we go so what's happening here take a look you're putting the glimmer which is also known as the highlight uh, this this glossy shine in the same spots for each of your characters. So what you're going to want to do, and oh my gosh, you know what? My tablet's not working right now, so I can't draw digitally right now to show you. But uh, I'll just have to explain it for right now, and then uh, I'll, I'll see what I can do about maybe doing a sort of explanation video. So, so uh, essentially, you want to think about where the light is coming from. Yeah, if you're going to... Uh, um, so, for instance, now obviously the light's coming over here from from this side. Excellent, excellent mark making, by the way, as well. I'm looking at this line work, and you're doing a great job uh, with some some subtle uh, curls right here in the hair. You're not what we call belaboring all the drawing. You're just getting the the the, the basic stuff down. And then we can talk about inking your artwork a little bit later because that's going to be an important part. Because uh, if you're going to do your comic, the best way to do your comic is uh, uh, on your own at first uh, so you get a good, good grasp of all these jobs. Nevertheless, 
uh, you want to think about where the light is coming from. So if it's coming from the other side, for instance, you'd have a glimmer. And then uh, one other thing is that you don't always have to necessarily uh, hit this lower highlight. So there's that and there's a, oh, um, wow, this is really well drawn, very good. I would have even continued the line a little bit more to show a little more difference between the iris, the colored part of the eye, and the cornea, the, the white part of the eye. And that, I, and it is annoying me right now that I don't have my tablet on me. I gotta get that power cable fixed. So, um, uh, this is great stuff. Keep designing, uh, create a portfolio of, of your characters and think about different variations. That's another thing you've been doing great. Um, uh, when, uh, in the live stream earlier, I was talking about, uh, I was talking about, well, I had mentioned that it's a good idea not to just go with the first design choice. Now, sometimes the first design choice is actually the best. It, it, you know, it's the first thing that comes to mind very often. The freshest thought is very often the best thought, but it, it is worthwhile to go through a couple of variations and th you're doing it. You're doing it. Oh, and the, the, the feet, we we're going to talk about feet too. You had mentioned, uh, that you were working on hands and that's good. I can tell you're, you're attacking these hands and really making sure that, that you're throwing. And this is a cool design for a costume, by the way. I love the shroud, um, the, the bone, he, you had, you design, where is it? Nightwolf designed this great. Oh, here you go. This awesome bone rifle. I it's I mean it might not be a bone, but it's like shaped like a bone over here. And it it's just really cool and well designed. That's another thing. Um, maybe and it, this is because this is part 2. It's hard to, uh for me to know whether or not I <laughs> I'm repeating myself. So Another thing you've been doing a fantastic job with is designing items. And do not ever stop that. Design, design, design. Like these are very specific tools that he's using. These the, looks like th these are laser swords with, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. But this looks like a laser sword. That looks like a trigger. You got like a sort of uh, pistol grip curve. This one, this looks more alien, and, and it's got a trigger as well, and looks like it's got a little ring for, um, like, attaching to a, uh, like, a belt hook. So these little touches, even though when somebody's reading your book, they, it may pass them by. If, if you know it, it makes it easier for you to tell the story because the... The, th the things that you will add into your story as a result uh, will be made richer and you won't even think about it. Like you, you, sometimes you might not even make the connections yourself, but because you have a back story, you, you've designed the, the characters' costumes carefully. Um, and, and this is another thing where Trent, Ken uh, Trent Kaniuga's channel will come into uh, uh, use because he does a lot of very good design work and you are not just a good storyteller i think that you are a good designer as well so keep designing and uh i'm going to go ahead and close this up and hopefully i've recorded the audio for this one but um uh, thank you for sending the work and go ahead and, and send me anything about your book and keep keep making your books and i'll keep i'll try to make some videos concerning some um, illustration and storytelling stuff. What is going on? Oh, okay. All right. Good day to you.